I love you Shona, I love you baby, I really miss you, I can't live without you, I can't hear without you, I can't see without you, I can't survive my entire existence without you. So that's, that's the most popular words during the rounds, even during lockdown. No, don't worry, I am not proposing any of you. <laughs> so you are safe. But tell me honestly, what's the most popular sentence that gets articulated, that gets uttered by the, uh, by the young generation? I love you. I love you. I love you has to be the most popular sentence that has been doing the rounds. Now, who says to whom I love you? There is a uh, popular concept that particular gender proposes another particular gender. So usually it comes from man to woman, but sometimes occasionally it does come from woman to man. But why do we have to say this? And how do we say this? What is the implication of this saying? Now, let me break this sentence into different parts of speech. I love you. Now, who is doing the loving? I. So I is the subject of the sentence, right? And who is being loved? Who is getting loved? The you. So you is the object of that sentence. Now let me tell you one simple thing. That what is this? This is sentence. I love you is sentence. Now sentence means, I hope everybody knows it. Sentence means punishment. For example, uh, judge has sentenced him to death. The high court has sentenced someone to 10 years of imprisonment. So that means sentence is punishment. So I love you. This is a sentence because I has sentenced you. Mm. <laughs> so that means I has sentenced you. So what does I love you mean? I love you mean I sentence you. Now that is to say I punishes you. Now what kind of punishment does I give to you? Or how is you getting punished by the I in that I love you? Because I in that I love you is the subject. Now who is the subject? Someone who has the agency is the subject. Someone who has the control has the sub is the subject. Someone who can control you is the subject. If I can control you, then I becomes the subject of you. He loves you. Then he controls you through love. So therefore, I becomes the owner of you by virtue of that control through that heterosexual love. I'll come back to that heterosexual love slightly later. So therefore, every time everyone says, I love you, every time if anyone says, I love you, it means that I sentences you because it is written in sentence. It is spoken in sentence. You cannot speak or write other than sentence. So because I love you is sentence. How can you deny that I love you is sentence? So every time you say I love you, it means I sentences you. And every time I sentences you, that means you is the victim of I's punishment slash sentence. Therefore, who is I? I is the owner. Now, who is you? You is the slave. Remember those days 
uh, of slave trafficking or slave trading during British colonialism that they used to take uh, people from one country like India and then they ship them to uh, say uh, Caribbean islands, West Indies. So this is how the slave trading or slave trafficking continued uh, throughout the entire rubric of uh, colonial history or colonialism. Now, my point is very simple that if I is the controller of you, then you is nothing. You is nothing other than a slave. So the whole myth is that because that's what patriarchy wants you to believe. I'll say it again. That's exactly what patriarchy wants you to believe that you is the loved or the beloved of I. But no, if you are the you of I love you, then you are not the beloved of I. You are actually the slave of I, whom I has basically owned, O-W-N-E-D, whom I has basically owned, has possessed as slave, as commodity, or should I say as object, as reified, commodified, passive object or which I has sole mastery. Like the British colonial masters used to have the colonial mastery over the colonized other, over the colonized enslaved natives. So if a particular gender proposes another particular gender that I love you, then this has got nothing to do with love. It has got everything to do with power. Mm. <laughs> so this is what it is all about. Power. So basically power is being smuggled. You know the word smuggling? So basically power is being smuggled under the curve of love. Basically, power is being smuggled under the curve of love. And what patriarchy wants us to believe, what patriarchy wants you to believe, that no, 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 this is not power. This is love. This is love. And now, when we have come down to love, patriarchy would not rest if you believe that this is love. Patriarchy would also make you believe that this is only heterosexual love. Because I love you can only be sentenced from male masculine to female feminine. Purush manush propose kore, mohilara proposed hai. And there are some unfortunate women who even agree to that proposal that, okay, I am so happy that I have found my slave master who would enslave me would colonize me. Congratulations, you have found your love, finally. Now, how does this operate in our society? Now, this operates through a particular hierarchy. Now, this is something very, very interesting. Now, this operates through a particular hierarchy now what kind of hierarchy hierarchy between between uh, relationship and friendship i am bachelor i do not have girlfriend i do not have wife so that basically means i do not have partner but what do i have i have colleagues who are my friends i have fellow doctoral research scholars who are my friends. I have so many wonderful students of mine who are my wonderful, wonderful, wonderful friends. So my students are my friends. So my colleagues of my college are my friends. Uh, the people who are doing PhD with me 
are my friends so my fellow phd scholars fellow research scholars are my friends all of you who are listening to this lecture in my youtube channel are my friends all my subscribers of my youtube channel are my friends but every time i say i have so many friends then someone from you would come up to me and walk up to me and say that okay fine you have so many friends i understand you have so many friends in college you have so many friends in university you have so many friends in academic fraternity even so many friends outside academic fraternity so but you do not have that one special particular partner whom you can marry whom you can develop as other half or some people patronizingly call better half shobhi to bujhlam but dada apnar to eto gulo bondhur moddhe sei bondhu ta nei jeta ar ki apnar bou hote pare apnar jibon songini hote pare apnar sahodharmini hote pare <laughs> now i understand that that basically means that there is a particular hierarchy that relationships and also heterosexual relationships are privileged relationships and the friendship which is also a relationship is under privileged relationships so those relationships which can be converted into heterosexual monogamous marriage get elevated into the hierarchy so that means there is always a patriarchal hierarchy between relationship which is heterosexual married and there is that not so privileged samparko that is friendship so every time i say he or is my friend or she is my friend only friend or is there anything more to it than friendship so what is this more that friendship cannot have and relationship always does have that is that is heterosexual monogamous marriage now why does now it brings us to the last question of this youtube video that why does patriarchy create this hierarchy between relationship heterosexual relationship marital relationship monogamous marital heterosexual relationship and friendship why do we have this hierarchy always there is hierarchy so because unless you heterosexuality proposes unless you through heterosexual monogamous love and particularly through marriage institution of marriage you propose someone i love you and end up marrying him or her having proposed him or her as part of your sentence of i love you you do not create that special partner because through that sentence patriarchy creates colonial hierarchy that is unless you develop that heterosexual marital partner what you cannot do you cannot love her that is to say you cannot own her and the problem that patriarchy finds with marriage and that's why patriarchy absolutely does not like friendship patriarchy is i repeat troubled by friendship and that's why i find patriarchy is absolutely hates 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 friendship because friendship is queer because friendship disturbs that heteronormative hierarchy and friendship more importantly and this is my last sentence friendship does not possess the eu as slave 
but heterosexual marriage possesses the other one as slave because if it does not possess a slave then how can you love now if you if you may wonder that no no oh, oh I, I mean we are just in love we are husband wife we love each other because we are uh, we, we we like each other intellectually okay fine if you like each other intellectually then if your girlfriend or if your wife sleeps with another man would you be okay with you then say no how would it not be okay with you it won't be okay with you because 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 body is important no matter how much you say you love as husband wife each other intellectually so so we often underrate body body is more important than the credit is due so if you like your partner intellectually then what's wrong with your partner sleeping with another person no no no, no i am not ready so that means you enslave your partner through making you and get enslaved in the process as well therefore heterosexual monogamous institutionalized marriage is absolutely favorite of patriarchy because it celebrates enslavement of you through I and I through you. That is the punishment or that's why it is called sentence. I love you. So I love you is a sentence. I love you is a sentence. And we know that sentence is actually a punishment. And what does not punish you? Friendship. And that's why patriarchy is troubled, disturbed and upset by friendship because friendship is queer and friendship resists and subverts this kind of owning up of I through you and you through I. Thank you. Thank you so much and we'll catch up with you very soon. Meanwhile, please be careful about the sentences so that your sentence do not end up becoming a punishment and only way to fight against patriarchy is that do not participate in this heterosexual politics of monogamy which celebrates power in the name of love and i'm telling you what what celebrates love it's not I love you, which celebrates love. It's actually friendship. It's actually friendship between the students and the teachers. It's actually the friendship between the teachers and the students. It's actually the friendship between colleagues. It's actually friendship between, uh, between in different kind of people with different kind of people. And that's why, that's why friendship has the tremendous queer potentiality of subverting patriarchy and of how patriarchy celebrates power through heterosexual love, particularly through the punishment or sentence of I love you. Thank you. And I love you all.